Currently, in our Angular application, even though we have implemented authentication, still a non-logged in user can see the dashboard page by simply typing the dashboard route path in the address bar. So if you go to our application, here currently no user is logged into this application. That's why you're seeing this login link. And since no user is logged in here, we are not seeing the dashboard link. But still, a non-logged in user can simply type the URL of the dashboard page, for example, root URL slash dashboard in order to go to this dashboard page. So here, even though it is not going to display any task, but still a not logged in user can visit this dashboard page. And we don't want this to happen. We want to prevent non-authenticated users from accessing this route. To do that, we are going to implement can activate route card on this dashboard route. So we learned about can activate route card when we were learning about Angular routing. And there we learned that we can use can activate route card in order to allow or prevent a user from accessing a route. Right. So we are going to use the same concept here in order to prevent a not logged in user from accessing this dashboard page. Let's go to VS Code. And here, let me close this app component.ts and also this task service.ts. I'll keep this auth service.ts open. And now what we want is I'm going to create one new file and I'll create that file inside a new folder. So here first I'll create a new folder. I will simply call it as route cards. You can name it anything. And inside this route cards folder, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it as auth guard. Okay. And it is going to be a TypeScript file. All right. Inside this, I'm going to create a function and I'll export that function. And I'll call this function can activate. You can name this function anything. Okay. Now this function, it is going to receive an instance of activated router snapshot. So I'll simply call it as router. And here it is going to be of type activated route snapshot. So in order to use it, we also need to input it from angular slash router. And then it is also going to receive an instance of router state snapshot. So I'll simply call it as state and it is going to be of type router state snapshot. Okay. Again, in order to use it, we need to import it from angular slash router. All right. So these are the two parameters which this function is expecting. Now, as we have learned in the Angular router section, from this can activate, we need to return a Boolean value. So when we return true, in that case, on whichever route, we will use this can activate. If from here we return true, in that case, that route will be accessible. If we return false, in that case, that route will not be accessible. So from here, what we will do is, inside this authguard.ts, we are going to inject an instance of auth service. So here, I'm going to create a variable. I'll call it auth service. And here we want Angular to inject. And in order to use this inject function, we are going to import it from Angular slash co. And we want Angular to inject an instance of auth service inside this file. Okay. And then here we will check if auth service. So in this auth service, we have this user subject. Okay. So on this user subject, we are going to use pipe. And then inside this pipe, we are going to use map operator. And in order to use this map operator, we also need to import it from rxjs slash operators. So we want to import this map from rxjs slash operators. All right. Now to this map, we are going to pass a callback function. And this callback function is going to receive the data which this user observable, this user subject is going to return. And we know that it is going to return as a user object. So here I'm simply going to call it as user. And then from this function, we are going to return. So first we will check if the user object exists. So if it is not null, in that case, we want to return true. Otherwise, we want to return false and then from this function from this connectivate function we are simply going to return this observable the observable which this 
map operator is going to return us so it should be return all right let's save this file and now let's go to our router module and there we are going to import that auth card so here let's write that import statement we want to import can activate from from the root folder we are going to go to this route cards folder and in there we have auth card file so from there we are importing this can activate function basically this function and now on the dashboard route so here we have the dashboard route there i am going to use can activate property to that we can assign an array and inside that array we are going to specify this can activate function okay with this let's save the changes let's go to our application so currently no user is logged into this application that's why we are seeing this login link and we are not seeing the dashboard link so now if a non-authenticated user tries to access dashboard page you see it is displaying nothing and we have been redirected to localhost colon 4200 now a non-authenticated user cannot access the dashboard page but if i log in so for that i'm going to use john smith account and when i click on this login button we are logged in and we can also see all the tasks in this dashboard component and since we are logged in we are able to access this dashboard page so this functionality is working as expected and also if i reload the page the user will still be logged in and we can see all the tasks in the dashboard component in the dashboard page but if i log out and now if i try to access the dashboard page you see it is not taking us to the dashboard page so this functionality is working as expected now what i also want is when a non-authenticated user tries to access the dashboard page first of all we don't want to show him the dashboard page and also we want to redirect him to the login page okay so let's go back to vs code and let's modify this can activate route card a little bit so currently this can activate route card it is going to return us a boolean value right or it can also return us a promise which results into a boolean value or it can also return us an observable and to use this observable we need to import it from rxjs so it can also return us an observable which emits a boolean value okay so this is the signature of can activate function now apart from boolean value can activate function can also return something called as url tree to use this url tree we also need to import it from angular slash router okay so this url tree simply means that from this function we can return a url to which we want to redirect the user so this function can either return a boolean value or it can return a url tree or it can return a promise of boolean value or url tree or it can also return an observable of boolean value or url tree okay currently we are simply returning a boolean value from here but now what we are going to do is here instead of returning this boolean value i am going to assign the result of this expression into a variable so I'll simply say const logged in equals. So if this user is not null, that means there is a logged in user. In that case, we are going to return true. But if this user is null, that means no user is logged in. In that case, we are going to return false. So this logged in, it is going to store a Boolean value true or false based on if this user contains a truthy value or falsy value. Now we are going to write an if statement and in that if statement we will check if logged in is true if it is true in that case we are simply going to return true else instead of returning false what we are going to do is we are going to redirect the user to the login page and to do that we can simply say this dot and now we need an instance of router class 
So what we are also going to do is we are going to ask Angular to inject an instance of router class. So here I'm going to create a variable. I'll simply call it as router. And here we need an instance of router class. And this router class, we need to import it from Angular slash router. Okay. So here it says duplicate identifier. So let's simply call it as route. And here let's say we don't need to use this keyword here. We can simply say route dot create URL tree. And here we are going to specify to which URL we want to redirect the user. So here we are going to use an array. Inside that array, I'll use single quotes. And inside that, I'll specify slash login. So if a non-logged in user tries to access the dashboard page, in that case, we want to redirect that user to the login page. But if a authenticated user, if a logged in user tries to access the dashboard page, in that case, we simply want to allow that user to access the dashboard page. With this, let's save the changes. And here I can see that we have a warning and it says not all code paths returns a value. That's because from here also, we need to return that URL tree, which we are creating. Okay, with this, let's save the changes. Let's go to our application. So currently we are in the home page. No user is logged in. If I try to access the dashboard page, we should be redirected to login page. So this functionality is working as expected. But if I log in using, let's say, John Smith account. So if I click on this login button with these credentials, we will be logged into this application. And in that case, we should be redirected to dashboard page. So if a user is logged in, then only now he would be able to access the dashboard page. If a user is not logged in, so if I log out from here, in that case, the non-logged in user will not see the dashboard link first of all. And also if he tries to manually enter that link by typing it in the address bar, in that case also, he will not be allowed to access the dashboard page and he will be redirected to login page. As you can see, the user has been redirected to login page. He is not able to access the dashboard page. Finally, let's go back to VS Code and here let's modify this function a little bit more so inside this function we are subscribing to this user subject right now when we are subscribing to this user subject here we will get a new user data every time this user subject emits a new user but we are not interested in the future values of the user we only want the current logged in user data once that is when this function will be called and if it is null we restrict user from accessing the dashboard page. And if it is not null, if it contains a user object, we allow the user to access the dashboard page. And after that, we are done with that user data. So we are not interested in any future value which this user subject might emit. So once we receive the latest emitted value from the user subject, we immediately want to unsubscribe from it. For that, again, before using this map, I am going to use the take operator. And again, in order to use this take operator, we also need to import it from RxJS slash operators. So I'm going to use this take operator. There I'm going to specify the value as one. So what it will do is it will get the latest value emitted by this user subject and it will pass it to this map operator and it will immediately unsubscribe from that user subject. So in future, if this user subject emits a new value, we are not going to receive that value. And we are doing this because we want to avoid any unexpected behavior which might occur when the user subject emits a new user value. With this, if we save the changes and let's go ahead and let's test the functionality one more time. So no user is logged in. If I try to access the dashboard link, the dashboard page by typing it inside the address bar, we are redirected to login page. If I log in using, let's say, john smith credentials and if i click on this login button now we are logged in and we are also redirected to dashboard page and we are able to access the dashboard page so the functionality is still working and this is all about authentication and authorization from this angular course in this section we learned about authentication and authorization and we did some authentication and authorization using our firebase server so we were sending a sign up request and login request to the firebase server 
and the Firebase server was returning us a JSON web token. Then for the future requests, we use that JSON web token in order to authorize the user. So if a request contains a JSON web token and if that JSON web token is valid, that means the user who is making that request, he is an authenticated user. But if the request does not contain a JSON web token or if it contains a JSON web token, but if it is not valid, in that case, that user who is making the request, he is not an authenticated user. So we use this concept in order to implement authentication and authorization in our Angular application. And same concept holds true for any other backend solution which you are using. This is all from this section and from this lecture. From the next section, we will start learning about modules in Angular. And we will talk about modules in great detail and we will understand it. This is all from this lecture. Thank you for listening and have a great day.